as Perry told you, I'm a master student. I'm not a professor or a PhD or something else. And I'm a fifth year at computer science here at NTNU. And as Perry said, I'm going to talk about the Android online patterns. A little bit of quiz, of course. But just in case if someone here haven't seen the pattern, have someone here used the pattern or is still using the pattern? Yeah. Shame on you. <laughs> I'm still using it. I turned it off yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As Perry said, you can, uh, you have to at least connect four dots, uh, and you cannot visit the same dot twice. And of course, that makes restrictions of how many possible patterns you're able to make. So, what I'm kind of interested in is the theoretical password space versus the, I call it the practical. Because people don't make patterns that look like this. When I walk to school and I want to change some music on my phone, I want to check Facebook, I don't want to make a strong, some kind of pattern like this. I want to access my phone easy because it takes too long of time to like, have too long of time. connect too many dots. I think it's kind of similar to what Janice said. People don't want to like pick this. The people want to pick the easiest way out. So, when looking at passwords, you can, uh, if you have a service, you can kind of predict that people want will choose words that connected to the service or connected to you as a person. But what about this stuff? How do we predict this stuff? Do anyone have any suggestions? How, do, how can we predict people's choice in Android unlock patterns? Yeah. Letters. Letters? <laughs> By how? Letters. How, do, how can we predict people's passwords of patterns? Yeah. Well, from what you said with letters, they might, because it's nine digits similar to a phone. Yeah. The old style phone had certain letters with each number, so you could try spelling something like that. Yeah, so it, this one will be nine. The one, two, three, four, five, yeah. Oh, or maybe they could, could, could try to draw the quadro and look like something. Yeah. Draw something like a square or yeah. anything else. Yeah. Or maybe a. <laughs> yeah, of course you have to like somehow know what people are doing. Yeah. So when a symmetrical or something that makes sense of pattern that you actually remember. Yeah, something that you remember, some kind of symmetrical. Uh, yeah. Um, When you look at something, a password is always something more than just letters, words, and even even patterns. How can we be able to like use you are to predict what pattern you make? If you ask what what part of you can reveal your pattern? This is kind of funny, when I present like the, the size of your hand, Pear is laughing at me. You can't ask people what their size of your hand is. Do you know how you could combine this with something else, like a mobile phone, to predict the pattern? Screen size. Of course. The screen size. If you combine the screen size and the size of your hand, how you're able to the pattern. I think Pear was like giving you a hint when he started the introduction. How do people start a pattern? 
on the upper, upper, upper left. Okay, if you have a small phone and a really big hand, wouldn't it be kind of a hassle to like reach some part of the screen? Why just the only one part? You can do yeah, yeah, of course, if you are with walking in the street and holding your mobile phone and using your other hand. But how do people interact with the mobile phone? <laughs> using both hands or using one hand? One hand. Especially if you're driving. Yeah, of course, if you're driving. But what about this? 40, 40, I think it was 44% starting in the upper left corner. But most people are right-handed. But what if you're left-handed? Would you start in the other corner? Can someone predict what this is? I think someone was kind of ahead of me when I went before starting the presentation. What about your background? Your reading and reading and writing orientation. Isn't that kind of how you Yeah. Okay, yeah. But yeah. And the, the reading and writing orientation, like if you're if you're starting like Arabic languages where you you read from right to left. There are studies that there were people that were presented like nine images and people with different reading and, and, uh, and writing orientation was asked to remember the pictures. People that had like uh, reading from left to right, they were able to like scan from left to the right and then remember the, the pictures from the start. And uh, the difference that was with the people that was asked. For instance, uh, Arabic, they started scanning the picture from the right to the left. But that may be an impact, or maybe Eric will give us a hint of how to predict people's patterns. So, this kind of research is kind of aimed to tell me who you are, and I will take you with your what pattern. Yeah. So, this research is kind of in the, in the start. Uh, I'm going to collect a lot of patterns and, and different kind of demographic information about the users and then analyze it and maybe find a correlation between uh, who you are and what pattern you're making. So at this point, I'm still sitting and writing. I have to do a kind of report. But the fun start starts in the next semester when I'm collating the data and hopefully I will find some, some answer is some of the properties that are, in, are helping us to predict patterns. Yeah.